Welcome to Thoughtfully Mindless. I hope everyone's having an amazing Tuesday. We are a week away from the U.S. election. Election day is November 5th. And uh, since we're a week away, I wanted to do a little video with uh, some predictions for the U.S. presidential election. I know we have Congress and local and state elections, but for this video, I want, wanted to focus specifically on the presidential election, as I know that's what most people's focus is on, even though you might have other focuses for state. With that, uh, I'm going to focus on a few different things. So we're going to look at the 2016 and 2020 U.S. presidential maps. Then we're going to look at Real Clear Politics's polls. And then we are going to look at some betting markets and a couple other things. <clears throat> All right, so let's get started. This is the election map for 2016. Donald Trump secured 306 electoral votes and Hillary Clinton 232. If you look at 2020, the map looks pretty similar. Uh, one of the big differences is just uh, there's about five states that flipped in 2020 to make the difference. So let's dive into the specifics on 2020 or 2016. So the difference with these two maps, as you can see, in 2020, we had Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania all uh, flip blue when in 2016, they went for Trump. So let's dive into those specific states in 2016, starting with Arizona. Donald Trump had 1,252,401 votes to Hillary Clinton's 1,161,167. 1, that is a difference of 3.5% and a difference of votes of uh, 91,234. Going back, we'll look at uh, Georgia next. In Georgia, Trump got 2,089,104 votes to Hillary Clinton's 1,877,963, which is a difference of 5.1%. Michigan. For Michigan, Donald Trump had 2,279,553 votes. 43 votes to Hillary Clinton's 2,268,839 votes. That is a difference of 0.3%. And then we're going to go to Pennsylvania next. In Pennsylvania, Trump had 2,970,733 votes to Hillary Clinton's 2,926,441 votes. That is a difference of 0.7%. And then finally, we have Wisconsin. Wisconsin had Trump with 1,405,284 votes to Hillary Clinton's 1,382,536 votes for a difference of 0.7%. Another swing state to watch out for is Nevada. In 2016, Hillary Clinton won by 2.4% with 539,260 votes to Trump's 512,058 votes. Now, as much as Nevada might be into play, it's six electoral votes. It is not a state that is going to make or break the presidential election, in my opinion, and uh, most likely statistically. We'll dive into the specifics of it here shortly in the 2024 map. Moving on to 2020. Uh, as I mentioned before, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania all flipped blue, uh, which ultimately led to Biden's 306 electoral votes to Trump's 232. In Arizona, we had... Uh, Joseph Biden with uh, 1,672,143 votes to Trump's 1,661,686 for a difference of 0.3%. Uh, and the difference was 10,457 votes. 
The differential in 2016 with Clinton and Trump was 91,234 votes in favor of Trump. Georgia, for Georgia, we have 2,473,633 to Trump's 2,461,854 for a difference of 0.23%. Uh, the difference in number of votes was 11,779 in favor of Joe Biden. The difference in 2016 was 211,141 in favor of Clinton. Michigan. Michigan, we had 2,804,040 votes for Biden and 2,649,852 for Trump. That was a difference of 2.8%, and the difference was 154,188 votes in favor of Biden versus uh, 2016, the difference was 10,000. 704 votes in favor of Hillary Clinton, or sorry, in favor of Donald Trump in 2016. Pennsylvania, we had 3,459,923 in favor of Biden to Trump's 3,378,263. That was a difference of 1.2%, and the differential in votes was 81,660. In 2016, and that was in favor of Biden, in 2016, it was 44,292 votes in favor of Trump as the differential. Lastly, we have Wisconsin. Uh, 1,630,866 in favor of Biden to Trump's 1,610,184. The difference there is 0.63%, and the total vote difference is 20,682. In 2016, it was 22,748 in favor of Trump. One thing from looking at those numbers, uh, Arizona flipped considerably with Trump leading 91,000, about 91,000, and then losing by 10,000 in 2020. Georgia had 211,000 in favor of Trump, and then he lost by 11,000, close to 12,000. Michigan, he won by 10,700 and then lost by 154,000 votes. Wisconsin, 22,000, about 21,000 in uh, 2016, Trump won by, and then he lost by about 21,000. Pennsylvania, he won by about 44,000 and then lost in 2016 by about 82,000. Real quick, I do want to look at Nevada just because it is in play. So 539,260 to 512,000. So we're looking at uh, about 28,000 vote difference. And then Nevada, 703,486 to 669,890. It's about 34,000 in favor of uh, Biden. So Biden's lead was a little bit more than Trump's in 2020. <clears throat> now, moving on to 2024. I don't think any other state at least from the polling, it doesn't look like any other state is really in play for the difference. Florida always has a chance of flipping. It's pretty close, but uh, most likely it's going to stay red. It was red in 2016. But it is one considered in play. Ohio, possible. It is possible that it flips, but it's it was also pretty substantial lead by Trump in 2020. This is the map currently uh, with the likely votes. So the ones that are pretty much secured has the Democratic nom nominee Kamala Harris at 191 or 226 
and then Trump at 219. We'll go over this map a little bit more here in a moment. This is the predicted market. So what this means is if you want to win $1 betting on Trump, you have to put in 60 cents. So if you put in $60 and Trump's, Trump wins, you'll get $100. If you want to put $46 onto Kamala Harris, you would get $100 if she won. With Trump having a 60 cent to 46 cent lead, that means odds are in his favor. And this shows the trend over time. Trump was up to 62 cents on October 26th and 25th. But he was also as low as 58 cents in the last seven days. If you go the last 30 days, it would likely be quite a bit different. So up until about October, let's see, October 9th is when Kamala Harris uh, was ahead and then started dropping below Trump. She's picked up a little bit in the last week, but she's still significantly behind Trump. Now, all of this being said, anything can change. Predictions are not completely reliable. And no matter who you support, if you want your candidate to win, don't listen to predictions and then assume that those predictions are going to be true. Go and vote for the candidate of your choice and get other people around you to vote as well. This is the 538 election. So they do some predictions and they run some simulations. Out of their simulations, they have Trump winning 53 out of 100 times and Harris 46 out of 100. Uh, they had a total of 1,000 simulations. So in that 1,000, it was Trump 534 times and Kamala Harris 463 times with no winner three times. With that being said, that is pretty much equal. I don't think this definitively tells you, well, nothing definitively tells you, but this doesn't give you too much of a, a gauge on much. And poly market is another prediction market. This has Trump with a 66.6% .6 chance to Kamala Harris's 33.4% chance. And these are their predictions, I'm assuming which interesting that they don't have Michigan chosen. Michigan is still looking pretty close. Uh, we'll come back to this in just a moment. Ballotpedia, this is polling those uh, prediction numbers as well. 60 cents for Trump's 45 cents to Kamala Harris. I believe that's what it was showing here. 46 cents, so slightly different. It's probably lagging in that. This one is actually showing it a little bit differently, and this is predicted. So this is showing 53 cents for Trump, 49 cents for Kamala Harris. This is what I really wanted to go over. I'm gonna just refresh this page so we can make sure that we have up-to-date information if anything has changed. This is Real Clear Politics. They have polls from multiple news sources, multiple polling sources. And the most important number here, I think, is the average. You can have a poll that shows Kamala at a 4% lead or Trump at a 4% lead, and those could be outliers. So the average is going to get you a little bit closer to reality, most likely. Now, uh, one thing to recognize in this is it actually has some historic numbers as well. So let's review this. The average, and this is the national poll, obviously we're, the, we're with the Electoral College, so the average or the national numbers don't mean everything. It's actually going to come down to individual states, uh, what how they perform in those states. Because uh, like Trump in 2016, he won the Electoral College without winning the uh, national popular vote. Anyway, the Real Clear Politics average for national is 0.4%. That means they added all these numbers, divided it by the total number of polls, 
and they got 0.4% as the average for Trump. Now, more important than that average is actually the trend that we see. Um, right around August 3rd, let's see. So Kamala Harris had been in the lead, in the averages, everywhere, right up until about October 24th, 25th. Since then, Trump has been pulling away a little bit and the odds are looking a little bit better for him. But since Kamala entered the race, uh, she went up in the numbers and then eventually took over Trump. And now Trump has been closing that gap. And uh, it was a few days ago when he finally took the lead. So obviously we have some outliers here, or not outliers, but some polls that look particularly good for Harris. We have the morning consult, and she's up 0.3% in that one. We have the Wall Street Journal with Trump up 3% in that one. If I said 0.3%, I meant 3% for the morning consult. So anyway, we have the average of 0.4%. Now, what's really important to look at here is this day in history. In 2016, Clinton was up 4.6% on this date. In 2020, Biden was up 7.4% on this date nationally. Now, what that means uh, is that it is quite possible, even though he hasn't done it in the prior two elections, for Trump to win the national popular vote in this election. It would be somewhat surprising, but based on these polls, uh, historically Trump has outperformed what the polls were showing. So if that happens, if Trump outperforms the national average of these polls at all, or even just performs as well as the, the averages indicating as of today, that would have him win the popular vote. Obviously, that doesn't mean he wins the election. It's just the popular vote. Now, let's dive into the battleground states. Starting with Arizona. Arizona has the average at 2.2% in favor of Trump. Uh, in the latest polls, only one poll has Harris up by 1%. As we can look in 2020, and 2016, Trump won both of those states, so it really wouldn't be a big surprise if he continued that trend and won that state this year. Uh, in 2016, it had Clinton with a 1.5% lead and Biden and Trump with a tie in 2020. So Trump is looking better in this poll, in these average polls, than he was in the last two elections. Let's move over to Nevada. Nevada, again, was blue in both 2016 and 2020. I believe Nevada hasn't voted for a Republican president uh, in about 20 years, if I'm not mistaken. Right now, Trump is up by 0.5% in the average. So, in 2016, Hillary Clinton was up 1.7% on this day, and Biden was up 4% on this day. So, again, if Trump either performs as well or outperforms as he has done in the past these polls, he will win Nevada, which will be really interesting to see. It'd be the first time that they voted for a Republican president in about 20 years. Now let's move on to Wisconsin. Wisconsin is a very close race at this point. Trump is in the lead. He has taken that lead since about October 18th. 17th, 18th, he started uh, leading in the polls in Wisconsin, pulling ahead in the average, and he's up 0.6%. On this date in 2016, Clinton was up 6.5% and Biden was up 6.7%. Now, as we discussed, uh, in 2016, Trump won by 0.7% and in 2020, he lost by 0.63%. So that means Trump outperformed these polls by about 6%, 5.8 to 6% each election in the last two presidential elections. If that trend continues, Trump is likely to win Wisconsin 
by several percentage points this year. Michigan. Actually, let's go back to Arizona just for a second. So Trump is up by 2.2%. He was down 1.5% in 2016 and tied in 2020. And then uh, he won by 3.5% in 2016 and lost by 0.3% in uh, 2020, which means he slightly underperformed in 2020 and he overperformed by about 5% in 2016. That one, I think, is more up in the air, depending on what happens. Uh, it's hard to say if he would outperform or underperform. Uh, if he outperforms, he could outperform by several percentage points. If he underperforms, I'd imagine it's going to be a slight underperformance again. All right, now let's look at Michigan. Michigan has Harris up by 0.5%, which is new. She had been in, so there must have been one poll that came in, and it's likely, yeah, so several polls have come in in the last couple days. So she probably pulled ahead on the 27th, maybe not. I'm not sure, I'd have to look at this and see why just today that she's ahead that doesn't quite make sense to me because the only new poll for today is a uh, trump by one so i don't know if this aggregate is lagging behind or what but but harris should have been up in the aggregate on the 27th considering this poll right here would have put her ahead most likely so it's this poll this five percent which uh, is a substantial lead in that specific poll. Now, one thing to pay attention to with this is one poll with a difference of 5% in a close race could tilt the poll average in somebody's favor substantially. Uh, if you're dealing with a 0.1, 0.2% lead, which is what Trump had a couple days ago, then that 5% difference in that one poll could swing that significantly in her favor, which is why she's up by 0.5% right now. Now, in 2016, Clinton was up by 7%. In 2020, Biden was up 8.2%. So in both of those years, Trump, uh, in 2016, Trump got Trump won by 0.3%, so he outperformed by about 7.3%. And then in uh, 2020, he lost by 2.8%, which means he outperformed by about 5.4%. If Trump outperforms the average this year uh, by anything near what he outperformed the last two, he would win Michigan. But Obviously, if the average holds firm, then Harris would win Michigan. Now, let's look at Pennsylvania. The average for Pennsylvania has Trump up by 0.6%. That has also only changed since about... October 5th, they were tied, and then Trump started pulling ahead, and he's maintained a lead in the average ever since. In 2016, Trump won by 44,000 votes, which was 0.7%, and lost in 2020 by 1.2%. In 2016, they had Clinton by 5% at this point, and Biden at 4.3% at this time. With that, if Trump outperforms like he did, so in 2020, he outperformed by about 3.1%. If Trump outperforms at all, then he wins Pennsylvania. If he maintains where he's at right now and performs as well as the polls are indicating, then he should win Pennsylvania. But it is pretty close, so it is quite possible that Harris wins Pennsylvania. North Carolina has gone red the last two elections, but 
it is close enough with a 1.1% average in Trump's favor that he would uh, potentially lose North Carolina. But based on the last few elections, it had Clinton up by 3% and Biden up by 6 or sorry, 0.6%. So with that, Arizona, Trump won by five or 3.5% in 2016 and lost by 0.3% in 2020, which means he outperformed polls a bit in 2016 and just by a nudge in 2020. If he outperforms, obviously he would win if he's up by 1.1% right now if he manages to go where the polls are indicating right now trump should win but it is close enough that it could go both ways lastly we are going to look at georgia georgia went to trump in 2016 and then biden in 2020 In 2016, it had Trump up by 2.5%, and he actually won by 5.1%. In 2020, it had Biden up by 0.4%, and Biden won by 0.23%. So, Trump outperformed uh, his average in both of those elections, but not by a ton. Based on Trump being up 2.4%, I would say Georgia is most likely going to go to Trump. But again, it is close enough that we could see a surprise there. Georgia was also with Harris in the lead. And then sometime around September 7th, she started dipping and Trump has been in the lead since. So... Those are the swing states. Those are the states that are really going to decide the election. Minus Nevada. I think Nevada can go either way and most likely not have any influence on the way the election actually goes. But, you know, it's still a factor. Those six electoral votes might end up mattering, but we'll start looking at a map here shortly. So based on the averages right now, we have Trump winning every state but Michigan on the swing states and that swing state with the substantial difference in the 2016 and 2020 elections with trump outperforming the polls significantly it is quite possible that michigan michigan goes to trump as well all right this is the electoral map i'm gonna play around in here a little bit just to see where things are going to go. So, Republicans, Trump has 2000 or 219 basically right now, assuming all of the other states maintain where they're at. So, it looks like Pennsylvania, Georgia, and North Carolina will all go red. That puts Trump at the 270 he needs to win. Now, if it is possible that those don't go to Trump as well, but most likely, based on current polls, it looks like they're going to. If all of the other states that Trump is currently in the lead in go to Trump, that would put him at 297 to 241 with Harris. That's also assuming Nevada, which has historically been blue. So let's say 291 to 2. 47. I actually think, from the news that I've read, I think Nevada, why is that? Okay. I thought it wasn't changing the number, but it is. I think Nevada will go red. I actually think Nevada is going to see its first uh, time winning for a Republican in the last 20 years. I think Nevada will likely go red. I think uh, Wisconsin is also possibly going to go red. If that happens, why am I not seeing an increase there? 
Or did I already have Wisconsin on here? <laughs> All right. Assuming Wisconsin is blue. With Nevada, that would put Republicans at 287, Democrats at 251, with Trump taking the White House in 2024. But I actually think it is quite possible Trump gets all of these swing states and ends up with 297 electoral votes. I don't know how Maine goes. It looks like they have a vote that could go to a Republican. I don't think that matters. Nebraska could have one go either way. I don't think that matters either. For anything to make a substantial difference, it's it's got to be these big number swing states. Even Wisconsin probably isn't going to make or break the election, but then again, it could. So again, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, if all three of those went to Trump, He secures the election with 270. And if he can get, I didn't have Michigan selected, Wisconsin, Nevada, Arizona, that would put him at about 312 if he can win all of those. And I think it is possible with the way that things have been lately, it is quite possible that Trump wins all of those. Now, granted, there could be Anything can happen in the next week, and cheating does happen in elections. I don't know if it'll happen in this election. Uh, there's always going to be some foul play. I don't know if it'll be enough to swing the election in any of the states. If you don't think cheating happens, then I have, uh, I have a bridge to sell you because <laughs> cheating happens. It's politics, and this is the highest office in the United States, which is considered the most powerful office in the world as far as politics is concerned. And politics is a dirty, nasty game where people want to do anything they can to gain the power that they want so desperately. And I guarantee people will do things that you and I, you and I would not want to do, would not do ourselves, but other people who care more about power will definitely do that. Again, I'm hoping that it's a free and fair election and that the winner is respected and we have a peaceful transfer of power, but this is what I think is likely to happen currently. And again, Wisconsin could go blue, Nevada could stay blue, but all that wouldn't matter. We'd still see Trump win and get put in the White House. Where, uh, where Trump could get in trouble is if Michigan and Arizona also go blue. He would still win because of Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, but Pennsylvania is a big one. Where Pennsylvania goes will be a big decider in the election because of all the swing states, those 19 votes are going to be critical. Now, Trump could lose Pennsylvania and win uh, Wisconsin and Michigan and be just fine, but a much easier path to the White House would be for him to win Pennsylvania as well. And again, I'm going to leave the map where I think it is likely to go with Trump winning all those swing states. I would love to hear what you think. Let me know if you think this is just a BS prediction or if you think I'm onto something. I'm basing this off of the Real Clear Politics averages as of right now, which does have Harris in the lead in Wisconsin. But as I mentioned, Trump outperforms the polls every time he's ran so far. Uh, do you think the polls are more accurate this year, or do you think the margin of error is still great in them? Personally, I think the margin of error is still good. I don't think if you look at 2016 and 2020, the margin of error was still pretty significant. There was still They were still way off on the averages to what we actually saw. I don't think the polling has become that much more sophisticated. If they had blind spots in 2016 and 2020, they most likely had the blind spots this year as well. Now, some polls might be better and might be more accurate this year. So that would bring the average a little bit closer, but there's still going to be some polls where the, the polling... Uh, 
the way that they do the polling is still going to be off. And I think the average is still going to be significantly off from where it is. So again, this is anyone's election. It could go either way. If you want your candidate to win, make sure you go out and vote for the candidate candidate of your choice. It is not an election that is going to be easy for anybody. And you also don't want to be complacent if you think your candidate is going to win, whether it's Clinton or, or sorry, whether it's Harris or Trump, go and vote for your candidate. It, it's just as simple as that. You have to go and vote if you want your candidate to win. Now, if you don't know anything about pol politics and you don't care, sit it out. I'm not one of those people that think you have to vote just because you're a U.S. citizen. I think voting is a responsibility. I think you have to be informed if you want to cast your vote. Now, obviously, that's not a legal requirement, but I think it's your responsibility to be informed about what you're voting for. Um, I'm not going to give my recommendation on who to vote for. I think that's up to you guys. But if you feel like sharing, put it in the comments who you're going to vote for in this election. And uh, if you want what state you're in, I think that would be cool to see from people. And then let me know if you think this prediction is accurate. So this has Trump. Uh, this is with Wisconsin out of there. So Trump with 302 to 312 and Democrats. Uh, Harris with 236 to 226. I think if things remain the same as they are right now, Donald Trump will most likely be the president come 2025. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll see you next time.